What's going on everyone? So welcome to a very special video. This is a video I've been looking forward to do for quite some time and I finally decided that yes, I'm going to do this and hopefully it will become a tradition and that is creating an award ceremony based on myself and that is Chad Savorn's first award show for 2023 films. So I decided to create 20 categories, um, five nominations for each category. Keep in mind, it goes without saying, but these um, five nominations in each category were ones that I personally chose. But I did have it where it was uh, a little bit interactive. So I filming this video on January 22nd of 2024. A week ago, I did release a poll for each category. So that way my subscribers could choose um, winners in each category. And honestly, I want to say I'm very, very happy and thankful for you guys as subscribers because it was great to see such a huge turnout for many of these, um, you know, polls. It was really, really something that I liked. And I will be announcing the nominations in each category, as well as saying the winner based on the subscriber poll, as well as my own choice um, for each category that I decided that I wanted to go with. Now, keep in mind, it goes without saying, but there are going to be times where what the subscribers chose, as well as myself, were in fact the same film, but there are also going to be times where that's not the case. Um, so I'll be going from, excuse me, best director to then um, best ending scene will be, you know, to, of course, end out this whole video. But um. Very curious to see, of course, your guys' thoughts in the comment section down below if you guys did not get a chance to actually, um, you know, put down in the poll. But um, guys, enough exposition. Let's get started with Chad Saborn's first award show for 2023 films. Let's get started. So kicking things off, we have Best Director. The nominees are Justine Tripe for Anatomy of a Fall, uh, Chloe Domin for Fair Play, Martin Scorsese, Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, and Yorgos Lanthimos, Poor Things. The winner for both Subscriber and myself is Oppenheimer. So Oppenheimer scored 70% in the poll for Subscribers, and yes, I chose it as well because, holy cow, the directing in this film, fantastic. Nolan really outdid himself, and um, yeah, I think he's ultimately going to win at the Oscars as well. But yeah, I'm glad to see Subscribers uh, chose this pick. Next up, we have Best Original Screenplay. The nominees are Anatomy of a Fall, Asteroid City, Fair Play, The Holdovers, and Past Lives. And the winner is a split. So subscribers, um, they actually chose Anatomy of a Fall with um, 52%. And then I chose Asteroid City. Um, Asteroid City, I just think, was so original in terms of what I saw on screen, but as well as also just felt so fresh in terms of what Wes Anderson's done before. So I loved it, but at the same time, I also do love the screenplay for Anatomy of a Fall. So um, that's a great choice. I'm glad the subscribers chose that, but again, I went with Asteroid City. Next category, we have Best Adapted Screenplay. The nominees are How to Blow Up a Pipeline, Killers of Flyer Moon, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The winner for both subscribers and myself is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer uh, managed to get 38% of the vote um, in terms of the subscribers. And I can understand why, because this is a tough category. Um, I mean, Killers of Five Moons is an incredible screenplay as well. I, I actually almost chose that as well. But uh, I ultimately went with Oppenheimer as well, because I do think that the structure is just so unique. It's so fresh at the same time. Um, it's really, really good, and it really puts a fresh spin on the biopic genre. So um, I'm glad that subscribers and myself, we agreed with Oppenheimer for um, Best Adaptive Screenplay. Next category, we have Best Editing. The nominees are Asteroid City, How to Blow Up a Pipeline, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And the winner, subscribers and myself both chose Oppenheimer. 60% of subscribers chose that, and um, for good reason. I mean, Oppenheimer is a three-hour-plus film, and it flies by deftly. It's really, really breezy in terms of the way that it's edited, and um, yeah, what a film. And that's why I'm glad that it won for Best Editing from Subscribers and myself. Next up, we have Best Original Score. The nominees are Asteroid City, The Killer, Oppenheimer, Poor Things, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And the winner from both subscribers and myself is Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer managed to um, get 65% from subscriber poll. And um, for good reason. Ludwig Aronson's score is phenomenal. Can't tell you how many times I've listened to this score and it fits the imagery perfectly. Um, so, so happy that it won Best Original Score from subscribers. And of course, I decided to choose it as well. 
Next category we have on the opposite end, of course, that is instrumental based. Next up we have lyrical based, best soundtrack. The nominees are Barbie, The Color Purple, The Holdovers, J Wan, and Wonka. The winner from both subscribers and myself is Barbie. Barbie got 51% of the poll and for great reason. The soundtrack in Barbie is quite catchy. It fits the imagery perfectly. It is really, really good. I've listened to it several times as well. It's quite, quite an album and it works really well. And especially um, in the case of in the film itself. So yeah, best soundtrack went to Barbie. Next up, we have best costume design. The nominees are Barbie, Eileen, The Holdovers, Napoleon, and poor things. So this one, subscribers and myself, we did not agree. Um, subscribers went with Barbie with 42%, and I chose poor things. Um, don't get me wrong, of course, Barbie has a great, great costume design, but I just think poor things was on a whole nother level with that costume design. It's really, really good. Um, highly recommend poor things in general, but um, yeah. So again, subscribers chose Barbie. I chose poor things for best costume design. Next up, we have Best Production Design. This was a tough category. The nominees are Asteroid City, Barbie, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. Um, so this was another one where subscribers and myself, we um, did not get the same result. Um, subscribers chose, and I definitely get this, they chose Poor Things with um, 32%. I ended up going with Asteroid City, although I can't lie, I was battling back and forth between Poor Things and Asteroid City, because I think that they both have such a unique and fresh approach of the production design, but I ended up going with Asteroid City, and again, subscribers went with um, Poor Things, but both are great decisions. I mean, honestly, it was a very, very tough category. Um, this was the last category that I actually chose, because I was just constantly conflicted about which I was going to go with. But again, I ended up going with Asteroid City and subscribers went with Poor Things for um, Best Production Design. Next up, we have Best Makeup. The nominees are Bo is Afraid, Maestro, Poor Things, Priscilla, and Society of the Snow. And the winner is a split. Subscribers, they chose uh, Bo is Afraid with a um, percentage of 50%. I ended up choosing Poor Things. Um, I love the makeup for Bo is Afraid. I really do. In fact, I almost chose that, but I ended up going with Poor Things because I do think that it is slightly better. But both are great choices. But holy cow, Poor Things makeup is incredible. Uh, next up, we have Best Visual Effects. The nominees are The Creator, The Killer, Oppenheimer, Society of the Snow, and Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. And the winner is... Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Subscribers and myself both chose that. 37% um, it managed to get. So this was a category that if you look at the poll, um, it's definitely something that there were uh, a mix of results. Um, Oppenheimer was pretty close to winning, but um, subscribers ultimately ended up choosing um, Across the Spider-Verse. For good reason, too. It's a visually dazzling film. Next category, we have Best Cinematography. Love this category. The nominees are Asteroid City, The Killer, Killers of the Flower Moon, Oppenheimer, and Poor Things. The winner, both subscribers and myself, chose Oppenheimer with 39%. So yeah, this was very tough. Um, honestly, I love all these choices. I really do. But Oppenheimer's cinematography, especially the 70 millimeter black and white, it's just, it's on another level, man. It really is. I love, love, love what they do with the cinematography in this film. The camera work, the movement lighting everything works so so well love it and that's why i'm glad that subscribers ended up choosing this as well for um oppenheimer for best cinematography next up we have best long take the nominees are asteroid city the beasts john wake chapter four maestro and saltburn and the winner both subscribers and myself chose john wick chapter four if you've seen the film, you know the scene that we're talking about. You know it. It's the scene at the end, of course, um, that involves action, uh, involves a certain type of gun that goes on for, I think it's like a three or four minute long take, but it is perfection. It really is. Honestly, this this scene in Asteroid City, the opening scene where it, um, 
you know, it's the first time you're in Asteroid City and the camera's slowly, you know, going around the town and you're slowly getting a sense of the environment, but at the same time, it's also foreshadowing future events, but you don't realize that until second viewing. Um, it was tough to choose between these two, but going with John Wick Chapter 4, I'm kind of happy that I did because that long take really made me giddy as a kid, um, and it just it hits every single time, man. So, yeah, uh, best long take goes to John Wick Chapter 4. Next up, we have best stunt work. The nominees are The Covenant, The Iron Claw, John Wick Chapter 4, The Killer, and Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, even though now apparently it's uh, just Dead Reckoning, whatever. But um, anyways, the winner is a split. So subscribers, they chose Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, but actually not Part 1, just Dead Reckoning. Um, that was 72%. I chose John Wick Chapter 4. This stairwell scene um, in particular, that alone is the best stunt work I've seen all year, hands down. Um, yeah, love, love, love that scene. So again, subscribers chose uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, but not Part 1. Um, and I chose John Wick Chapter 4 for uh, my personal choice for best stunt work. Next up, we're getting into the acting categories. We have Best Lead Actor. The nominees are Jeffrey Wright, American Fiction. Nicolas Cage, Dream Scenario. Alden um, Enric for a Fair Play. I think I butchered his name. I apologize. Um, Paul Giamatti, The Holdovers. Killian Murphy for um, Oppenheimer. The winner, landslide victory. Uh, we have Killian Murphy for Oppenheimer. 69% of the vote um, for subscribers. And I personally chose that as well. Uh, fantastic performance. Yeah, I hope that he wins at the Oscars because here, yeah, I he, best lead actor in my opinion for the year. Next up, we have Best Lead Actress. Um, we have the nominees, Sandra Hewler for Anatomy of a Fall, uh, Phoebe uh, Donovix for Fair Play, Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Natalie Portman, May, December, Emma Stone, Poor Things. And the winner is a split. So we have Lily Gladstone for uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. That was the subscriber winner. Subscribers chose it, it was uh, 48%. I personally chose Emma Stone for around um, poor things. I think that that performance was just phenomenal. I mean, all these performances are for sure, but that one in particular just really stuck out. Um, and that's why I chose Emma Stone and subscribers chose Lily Gladstone for Killers of the Flower Moon. Next up, we had Best Supporting Actor. The nominees are Ryan Gosling, Barbie, Dominic Sessa for The Holdovers, Charles Melton, May, December, Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer, and Mark Ruffalo for Poor Things. And the winner, Another uh, kind of landslide. Uh, we have the winner from subscribers and myself, Robbie Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. Yeah, what a performance. Um, just, I, I hope that he gets the Oscar. I think that he is simply fantastic. And uh, similar similar to Killing Murphy, in my eyes, he is the best supporting actor of the year. And that's why he won the award, the Chad Saborn Award. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was best supporting actor. And next up, we have best supporting actress. The nominees are Deirdre B. Henson for The Color Purple, Anne Hathaway for Eileen, uh, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers, Julianne Moore for May, December, and Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. And the winner is a split. So subscribers, they chose Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer. It was 41%. Uh, and um, I ended up choosing, personally, Divine Joy Randolph for The Holdovers. I think that... It's tough. It's a very tough category for sure, but I ended up going with her because in the holdovers, I just think that her, Dominic Sessa, and Paul Giamatti, the three of them together are incredible, but I especially was blown away by her performance. I think that she is someone that I've seen before in other films, but seeing her in this, it's definitely a, a like a performance that makes me now want to be on the lookout for um, future work from her because she is that great. So um, that's why I chose her, but again, everyone else shows uh, Emily Blunt for Oppenheimer in terms of subscribers. Next category, we have Best Ensemble Cast. The nominees are Asteroid City, Barbie, The Color Purple, and The Holdovers, and Oppenheimer. And the winner is a split. So subscribers, they chose Oppenheimer at 64%. I personally chose Asteroid City. Um, I think that Asteroid City, although I love Oppenheimer, and I think that that has quite the cast, and I do think that they do a great job of um, showcasing the love between all the actors. I think that Wes Anderson's ensemble cast is on another level. I think that it's insane at how many great actors there are in this film of his. 
but um, he is still able to manage to divide up the time enough to where each actor gets enough to where you remember them for this film. So um, yeah, I chose I chose um, Asteroid City, but again, uh, most people in terms of subscribers, they chose Oppenheimer. And the last two categories, um, that's it guys, here we go, the last two categories. The first one, we have um, Best Opening Scene. The nominees are American Fiction, Asteroid City, How to Blow Up a Pipeline, Talk to Me, and To Catch a Killer. And the winner is a split. So I personally chose um, Asteroid City, but subscribers, they chose um, Talk to Me with 42% of the vote. And I understand why. I mean, the opening scene of Talk to Me is pretty darn memorable, but... um. I think Asteroid City's opening scene really lets viewers know the type of film that they are getting into, how you you are definitely going to be entertained, but you also need to be paying attention because there is a lot of stuff that um, Wes Anderson is going to be throwing at you and you have to pay attention. And I really admire that. I, I, I really admire that. Um, so, yeah, I went with Asteroid City. But again, 42% um, of the subscriber poll ended up um, choosing Talk to Me. And last but not least, it's fitting. Um, next up, we have... Best ending scene. The nominees are Eileen, Infinity Pool, Oppenheimer, Saltburn, and uh, Talk to Me. And the winner, chosen by both subscribers and myself, um, Oppenheimer. 76% of my subscribers chose this film. You can tell my subscriber base loved Oppenheimer's ending, and for good reason. It is a fantastic, bone-chilling ending. I absolutely loved it. I'm glad subscribers are on the same page with me with this one. I loved this ending. I really did. And um, yeah, that's why I'm glad it won in this category. But yeah, guys, that is Chance of Bourne's first award show for 2023 films. Um, hopefully, I, this is something I can do each year. Hopefully, um, you know, next year I'll be talking about 2024 films um, in terms of these categories. But um, yeah, I had a lot of fun doing this, honestly. It was a little bit stressful at times, but overall, I'm glad that I did this. I'm glad that I had fun with it. I'm glad that you guys were able to vote. Um, so I really do appreciate you guys' support and you guys, um, you know, taking part in those polls. And as always, if you haven't for some reason subscribed, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, follow me in the letterbox, and I'll catch you guys later.